how do young people get started in this business? How can they go from a commercial herd to a purebred herd? What are kind of the stages they have to go through? Should they be looking at genomics? But I wasn't sure if you were asking one person or... Okay, is there anyone you want to start with? Okay, so guess what, Curtis? You have the microphone in your hand. So. Okay. Is that yeah, okay? So a couple aspects of your question. Uh, like I said, we use a limited amount of sires. We pick the best bulls that there are available. We predominantly stick to proven bulls due to the higher reliability of them. We have a moderately small herd compared to a lot of people. We milk 50 cows, so we can't afford to make very many mistakes in breeding decisions. Sometimes that will even happen if you use proven bulls. So that's why we stick to the proven bulls, just so we have more of a, we're more confident of the matings that we'll get and the offspring from them. We do use some genomic bulls. Um, it is a very limited amount, but we, have to, we do, are using some. Doorman is the exception nowadays. I think he stands out about, among the rest, but uh, in the, in the, for the most part, we use the sires that will provide, like I said before, dairy cows with good udders, good feet and legs. And we use them. They don't necessarily need to be the number one LPI bull. They could be number 12 on the list. If we think that they are ideal for our confirmation and our health traits and they'll fit well for our herd, then we will use them. Like John said, we do go out and we see uh, daughters of bulls like he, he does and, and take advice from other breeders as well. And uh, rather than just look at them on paper, we want to see what they're going to do. And sometimes if you can see the dams of some cows and then you can see the daughters by a bull, then you can see what his strengths and his weaknesses are and how he improved. Yeah, just a, just a quick comment to your question. Uh, I think if I was a young person starting over again, just an advice I would give maybe uh, to fast track the whole uh, cow thing for 10 or 15 years is to go out and buy some embryos from a, a high profile family, a family that's proven themselves. Uh, don't need to spend the top end, but make sure you get something that's got a proven sire with a cow family. That would, to me, that would fast track your um, herd, genetic herd, very quickly. I agree with John totally on get into some embryos, get into a cow family. You can get into cow families pretty quickly that, um, and not that expensively, that you can add to your herd and really improve things that way. Um, with our Jersey herd and the Jersey breed, we do not have the luxury of as many bulls to pick from as what our, my fellow Holstein friends up here have. So it's a little harder in the Jersey breed to find the balanced bulls that you want to use. Um, so we really base it again on cow family. What do the family behind the bull look like? What do his daughters look like? And that's why we use more proven bulls maybe because we can actually see the proof in the pudding. I, I guess the within herd, there's always the improvement of you can pick what to you is the best cow you have and expand through embryo transfer, but the embryo option or live cattle Imports to have something to work with and then expand on your base is, uh, is very easy to do. Uh, we have participated in the embryo market selling, but it's important whenever you're selling something to make sure that you're making money at what you're selling. And if you're not sure you're doing that, we've actually participated on the other side. Uh, we have brought in a few embryos uh, from cow families that we've been interested in to try to... Uh, uh, diversify the herd a little bit as well as with we work with a uh, cha lacosis free herd so we have uh, health status to consider so the embryos are a good uh, path for us if we're going to do that the on the bull side uh, I'm a big believer that the health traits are something that we need to pay a lot of attention to and so I, I believe in proven bulls I use proven bulls but I'm not completely happy with the selection of proven bulls based on health traits. When those proven bulls were bought, health traits uh, weren't measured yet here, so there isn't as much, much selection compared to the genomic bulls that are available that have been selected for that for a number of years now. So we're probably 60% of our herd breedings right now are genomic young sires, and a lot, a lot of that is because of what the standards I have put in when I'm picking for daughter fertility uh, and herd life is a lot easier now it's it's more common but the daughter fertility specifically uh, it's hard to get a very long list of bulls that proven bulls that are significant improvers of that so we are just starting to see uh, the genomics uh, proven ourselves and our herd I was involved with GB as all that research was done so I'm very confident in the science behind it and and how it's going to work and to me one of our best two-year-olds right now is by a uh, genomic bull that we had picked out early on as far as which ones we pick I know that I won't always pick the right ones but when I pick them I try to pick 
the pattern in the proof that I'm going to like, even if the production drops a little bit and they aren't on the top list anymore, it's still going to have the traits that I want and that I need in my herd to improve. So where they're actually ranked, to me, isn't as important long-term as that they, they don't have the things that I need to protect in my herd. Okay. <clears throat> and I agree with the uh, good talking for the both of my friend here. Uh, another thing for the, for the young breeders is, uh, you know, the genomics is, the price is high too. Is the, it's not the every bulls is available. You see the number one, number two, and uh, and the higher is the price is so high. But for me, it's not a risk to use the young one, uh, the good sire genomic with the type or with the same philosophy, philosophy you have. And uh, you use uh, two months late or six months late, the bull's still really good too. You don't change uh, too fast because this is. The new bulls coming is all the time very high price, and sometimes the guy put the side view. And uh, but since that bull he fit with the herd, we fit with your philosophy. For me, it's important to stay uh, that kind of bull, and uh, and you uh, and you listing bull to use at the farm. Uh, I like the the genomic and other tools for me is uh, you have a new uh, some new pedigree coming there, a new line of bulls coming there is good for the breed and. Uh, I know the young breeders and the new uh, future breeders. They like to uh, to have a new a new uh, system, a new type. is a very good opportunity with the genomic, but it's, it's not necessary to use only the number one of today. And, and six late is still good, and we, it's good for the future we use again. Okay, okay. and I think that's a very 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 good question. And because this uh, this group right here is really fairly diversified. You have a, a fairly young farm, John, with you, you know, coming back from university and they're saying, I want to be in this business, and then some really old family lines and genetics. So I think it's a great question to kind of explore, because what you have is very, very successful operations that really started from different points.